Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody. So I want to talk a little bit about fear today, okay? Psalms 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. So when I read this scripture, I sought the Lord, and he heard me. So that portion, you sought him. So you're praying to him. You're trying to find God. You're trying to get closer to God. You're seeking out him. You're saying, God, help me out. Take away this fear. Take away this problem. Take away the entrapment in my mind that is keeping me in a stagnant state not to talk about you. And it says, and delivered me from all my fear, saying that God will deliver you from that fear. Okay. Um, I think one of the biggest things that people really have issues with, and I've had this issue too, is fear itself, right? Being afraid, having a phobia about something. Um, and I think sometimes that we allow these phobias to cripple us and keep us in a mental prison and a mental cage to where we feel like we can't break free of that. And so there are things that I believe that you can do. One, you can identify what it is that you're afraid of. Two, start making steps to overcome that fear, meaning put yourself in a position or put yourself in a situation where you are exposed to that fear and take that step. Sometimes we could be so afraid we might need that extra push from a brother or a sister or a friend or uh, loved ones to kind of get over that hump, right? We use that fear to prevent us from doing certain things. Right, We can become content in a job and we might want to go and get a different job, but we're afraid that we might fail at that job because we're comfortable in the job that we're in. Or I'm afraid to go out and try to have a relationship because I'm uh, afraid of rejection, so therefore I'm not going to put myself out there. I think sometimes what we can do is we can make baby steps. And as Christians, I feel like we can make baby steps as Christians to not be afraid. Okay, we got to pray. We have to ask God to take away our fear. We have to acknowledge what it is that we are afraid of. So that way we know how to pray to get delivered from that fear. So if I'm afraid to go and talk to people about God because I'm afraid of people making fun of me. So now I've identified what the problem is, right? Being humiliated and ask God to get me over that humiliation. So little steps, I could go and talk to somebody about God, or I could just walk by and say, hey, you know, God loves you and just keep moving. So there's little steps you can do to help you kind of transition from getting over your fear into getting you out there a little bit more. Remember, boldness is something that will come in your walk with Christ. Christ will make you bold in your walk with him. But he also gives you gifts, and each gift that he will give you is for you specifically. So God might not call you to be a pastor, but if that's what you're wanting to be, it might not work because that's not what God has in store for you or it's going to fail. So I would go and I would ask God, God, whatever you see me fit for, whatever gift that you can give me, that you know me, you've created me, you've formed me and shaped me, you've given me certain gifts ever since I was a child, but now it's time for me to recognize that gift and ask you to help me in that gift. And then God will bless you within that gift. It could be as simple as helping somebody else out and then telling them that, oh yeah, God has given me the gift to help people, so that's what I am doing. Open yourself up a little bit each time to let people see who you are and then maybe by your actions, they'll want to get to know God more. When I go to the store, sometimes I talk to people about God. Uh, when I go out and people say, man, there's something different about you. I tell them that, you know, hey, I, I know we haven't seen each other in a long time, but this is what happened in my life. I came to God. I came to know Christ. So there is a difference about knowing him and, and knowing something about him. Knowing him is having a very personal relationship.
See, I knew about God before and I never had that relationship with him. So there was nothing that I would ever go to him with. There is no problem I would ever go to him with. I wouldn't tell him about my fears or my anxieties or my issues or my worries. And I still have those today. As a matter of fact, I went to church and I cried and poured my heart out because I get to worry about things. So I, I, I'm afraid of losing things. And so I asked God, God, take away this fear. My wife prayed with me last night and I fell asleep because there was a peace over me through the prayer that I wouldn't have to worry about anything because God has promised us that you walk with him. He will take you through the storms. He will get you through the storms. So there is nothing to be afraid of. But what happens is we give in to our own thoughts about fear and we enclose ourselves to that fear which keeps us stagnant. And so like Psalms 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me. So pray to him, ask him to help you and he will deliver you from that fear, whatever the fear is. But understand, I would do it personally. I would do it in sections. I would sit and chronologically figure out what am I afraid of the most and ask him to work with me on the least to the most or if you're really wanting to be as bold as you can be, ask him to help you with the, the, the highest to the lowest. But keep your faith in God. God will work things out for you. And it might not be in your time. It is in his time. And that is something that I am learning through this process, through this walk with Christ, that a lot of times it's not in my time. It's in his time because God's timing is perfect. And when that time comes, he will take away that fear for you if you want that fear to be taken away. And it might be a process and you might be like, well, God, why isn't this fear taken away from me? I'm still fearful. I'm still, you know, not wanting to be where I want. But there's a reason why God is doing it. Understanding that God's ways and his thoughts are far more than ours. So our feeble mindset of how we view things and how we want things done may not end in the best way possible for us. That's why God will do it for you. He knows you. He took time to form you and shape you, like I said. So he's going to know what you can handle and how much of it you can handle. He's not wanting to see you fall. He's wanting to comfort you and bring him to himself even closer than you already are. So with that, I just want to say, you know, I love you guys. God bless. Stay in the word of God. Stay in love. We'll talk soon.